Okay, everything about this setup is terrible. Let's try that again. Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. Today I'm going to talk about barrel lapping, which is a way to correct the geometry and improve the finish in a bore. Now, I've got an unusual bore on my big steam engine project, and a traditional cylinder hone isn't going to work, so I think a barrel lap might be just the solution I need. So let's go. Well, we haven't seen this happy fellow in a while. This is the frame that I line bored in the first video in this series. And the finish in there is decent. It's probably good enough for the crosshead to run in. But, you know, let's just see if we can make it a little better. There's machining marks in there visible, but it's fairly smooth to the touch. Normally for model engine bores, I use these things. These are automotive master brake cylinder hones. They're also used in the master and slave cylinders in hydraulic clutch systems and other similar automotive applications. And they work great in model engine cylinders. They're spring-loaded and you run those shoes up and down in there. However, on this particular bore, there's these little windows in here. So obviously these things wouldn't work at all. Those shoes would just pop right out of there and snag and it would be a disaster of cats and dogs living together. So we got to do something else, and that's where I thought a barrel lap would be the perfect option here. I thought I should start by double checking the dimensions here. I do know that this bore is slightly egg-shaped. I measured it right after machining, and it was about a thousandth egg-shaped. So I double checked that here to see if that's still the case. And actually, interestingly, it got worse. While it was sitting on the bench here for three months, the egg went from one thou to about three thousandths. By egg-shaped, I mean in this dimension here, it's slightly wider than this dimension here. So adjacent circle quadrants have slightly different radii. Now, how would that have happened? It's hard to say for sure, but my guess is that it's down to how I had clamped it. You may recall that I line bored this, and when I did it, I had clamped it from above, as you see here. And this was a very sturdy clamping setup that worked really well. So well, in fact, that it pushed the tailstock back when I crashed into it with the setup. But I think what probably happened here is that this was slightly compressing the casting. Then when you cut a round bore on that and then release the clamps, the bore expands slightly in the direction that it was clamped, and there's your egg shape. What's interesting is that the egg got worse over time as it sat on the bench. Maybe the cast iron was settling or relaxing or who knows what. But uh, in hindsight, I suppose it would have been better to try and clamp maybe on this bottom ledge here or something like that. I'm not sure. It would have been tricky to avoid this, I think. Conveniently, though, because this is a bore for a crosshead, which only engages on the two outer surfaces and not the two short sides, it's not actually that serious that this has some egg shape to it. However, while we're here, we might as well see if we can improve on this. I've got these materials here to make my lap out of. I've got a chunk of aluminum, and the scrap bin also turned up this nice piece of mild steel, which will act as the mandrel for the barrel. I'll go ahead and chuck this up in the lathe and get ready to do some turning. I'm going to you know, roughly align the far end of it here by tappy tap tapping it in. I'll say up front here that the lap that you see me making is very heavily based on the one that Mark Prezzo Presling made on his video about lapping a model airplane engine cylinder. So I'll link to that below. It's a great video. I basically just took his design and reduced the part count a little bit. And after facing the end, as is tradition, I punch a number two center in there and get some tail support going. What I'm making here is a single split lap. It's a very primitive kind of style. The way a barrel lap works is you have a cylinder that fits into the bore you want to lap, and that cylinder has some method of expansion so that you can gradually expand it and grind the bore into a finer shape and a better finish. There are many, many sophisticated designs for doing this. Most are based around a series of double cuts around the outside of the cylinder on opposite ends, rather like an ER collet. But there are also some very clever designs involving helical splits that circle around the part and so on. There's a company called Acro that makes very nice brass expanding laps of that design. So there's lots of ways to do it, but we're not tool makers here, we're just hobbyists. So a very primitive single split down the side of this barrel is how I'm going to do it. As I reach my final dimension here, I'm making sure that I don't have any taper in this. That's quite important because, of course, if the barrel is tapered, then we're going to create a tapered bore. 
I measured to the wide side of the egg in my bore, and as predicted, it doesn't quite fit. In fact, I can feel it rocking on the short sides of the bore there. So I did one more light cut that should bring it down to a sliding fit on the short side of the egg. And indeed, that worked. So that'll be my starting point for expansion. A nice sliding fit there. Then of course I need a hole all the way down the center of this rather long barrel for the mandrel to slide through. The diameter of this is fairly arbitrary, really. I just chose a diameter that was a good fit for the stock that I happen to have to make this mandrel from. I would have liked to have made this mandrel a little longer actually, but this is really as long as I can make it with the drills that I have. As with everything on this engine, I'm really pushing the limits of all of my tooling here. So even just drilling a hole this deep is fairly difficult for my equipment. And then I'll just deburr that with the, with the, with the, and I'll just deburr that hole, break that sharp edge on there. And now I can part it off to length. This is it for the lathe work on the barrel part. It's really very simple. And Yahtzee. One more quick test fit before I go on here. And yeah, that's a really nice fit in there. Once again, I wish I had made that a little longer, but eh, I think we'll be just long enough that we can get away with it. To the mandrel next, I'm gonna chuck up this scrap of steel here, and I will face off the end of that, as is tradition. It's always fun facing rusty things because the transformation from garbage to beautifully machined surface is much more dramatic. I'll pull that out to a length that is sufficient to include the barrel plus length on the far end to be driven by the chuck. And I'm gonna tappy tap tap this reasonably straight as well. I don't have much material to remove here, so I need it to be running reasonably true in the jaws of its own accord. And then I will once again center drill and set up tail support for this part. And off we go making chips on the mandrel. I'm turning this down to a pretty comfortable loose fit inside the barrel. The whole idea here is that the barrel is supposed to be self-aligning, so it needs to have some slop and some tilt in it on the mandrel. You don't want the lap to be trying to alter the position or angle of the bore. You want it to just follow the bore that's there. So for example, on first test fit here, it's a nice easy sliding fit, but there isn't really any rock to speak of in that. I'd like a little more than that. So I took another fine finishing cut on there to give it a little more clearance. And now when I slide that on there, I can feel some definite rock in there. I don't know what the actual clearance is, five thousandths maybe, something like that. But enough that I can tell it's gonna float on there of its own accord and do a decent job of following the bore. Now for the traditional complete waste of time portion of a Blondie Hacks project. I'm drilling and tapping the end of this for a washer that will retain the barrel on this mandrel. However, as you'll see, this turns out to be completely pointless. Stay tuned to find out why. And Yahtzee. Still in the realm of the pointless here, I couldn't find a washer suitable in my hardware bin, so I went ahead and made one real quick out of the end of the scrap here that I had left over. Over to the mill now, I need set screws that will create the actual expansion of the barrel. So I'll center this up using the vise jaws and the ends of the part. I'll go ahead and make three evenly spaced holes down the length of it here. These are tapping drill size for the set screws that I arbitrarily chose as quarter 20. Although in hindsight, I think it would have been better to choose a finer pitch thread, as you'll see. There's a fair amount of force on these set screws, and it's nice to be able to have a really fine adjustment on them. But quarter 20 worked okay, but next time I would do something finer pitch. 
I also counterbored these a little bit just in case the screwdriver needed some clearance or something. I wasn't sure what might happen here, so I just did this just in case. And also it looks nice. And in with the tappy tap tap. A quick lazy deburr of the back sides of those holes. And let's do a test fit on the mandrel. And that is looking good. I'll put in the useless retaining washer there and give it a little end float there. And now what I'm gonna do is transfer punch those set screw holes into the mandrel because what I'm gonna do is drill generous clearance holes through the mandrel. And that is going to be the drive dog for the barrel. The mandrel has to have some way to drive the barrel in a way that still allows the barrel to float and flop around. So the way I'm doing this is just having the set screws that expand the barrel also be the drive dog. So that's the main way that I reduced the part count on this. I'm using my cross drilling fixture for each of these holes. After each hole, I just use the drill to line up the previous one to get all three holes vertically aligned. And now you see why that retainer washer on the end is so useless, because of course, these drive dog slash expansion set screws also retain the barrel end to end. So there you go. To make the long slit down the length of the barrel, conveniently, I found that it fits in my bandsaw, just barely. I could of course do some sort of elaborate slitting saw setup for a perfect slit, but this doesn't have to be perfect. So I also found that my angle plate here is a really good fit to hold this thing vertically, and I can use the set screw holes to hold it to the angle plate. You don't wanna clamp the barrel to anything, of course, because I'm gonna be slicing through it, and then the clamp would either fall off or pinch the blade, which would both be a bad situation. So the angle plate there will allow me to hold it safely. However, the angle plate doesn't quite fit under the saw. But it's really close. So some field expedient tool modification with a file should do the trick. The body of this saw is some kind of like zinc based casting alloy that they make power tools out of nowadays. And it's really, really soft and it files extremely easily. So it took no time at all to modify that lower part of that body there to give me just enough clearance to slide the angle plate in there. Perfect. And that allowed me to hold this nice and square to the table and nice and safely so I can make this very long shallow cut all the way down the length of it. I went entirely through one side and then about halfway through the far side. Ideally a flexor joint like this will terminate in a hole so that there's nowhere for stress risers to form which can cause that split to crack. However, there's absolutely no way I could drill a small hole at the end of this slot all the way down the entire length of that barrel. You'd need a very exotic aircraft drill or something to do a hole like that. So I'll be living without that. But this thing is going to be used exactly twice in its entire life, so not a big deal. I chose a quarter 20 thread for the expansion joint knowing that I have plenty of quarter 20 hardware, so I would surely have some set screws appropriate for this. And of course I didn't. Now I could order something, but really, when you're standing in a machine shop, there's no excuse for putting a project on hold for lack of hardware. So I grabbed some threaded rod and proceeded to make myself some set screws. After facing one end, I decided to try and part these off to length, and parting threaded rod never actually works very well, but every so often I decide to try again and hope that perhaps the laws of physics have changed in the intervening years. They have not. You can see the wiggling there as the parting blade and the thread engage in a battle of wills for where straight should be, and whoever wins, I lose, so discretion is the better part of valor. I gave up on that, cut it off on the bandsaw, and then faced it down to final length. Then I used the bandsaw to create a quick screwdriver slot in the end of each one. Presto! instant long set screws. Now the length of these has to be exactly right because it needs to be able to apply force to the far side of the barrel like so, but also it needs to be just the right height above. So it needs to be below the surface of the curve so that it doesn't scratch the part. And because these are slot headed set screws, the top surface needs to be flush with the hole around it. So really these should be a little bit shorter yet. This is important with slot headed set screws because the threaded hole around the top is actually supporting the slot. 
If the slot is above the threaded hole, the slot itself is actually weak and it's very easy for it to crack apart when you're twisting hard on it. It's one of the reasons you don't see slot headed set screws anymore. They're not as robust as more modern designs. Now to kind of set up and calibrate this thing, I'm checking the diameter all the way down the length here to make sure it's consistent. And that looks really good. I could adjust it at this point if it had any taper in it. And now I'm gonna apply a little bit of pressure on each set screw because I need to kind of learn how this mandrel is gonna work. I did my best to apply the same angle rotation to each one and then measured down the length to ensure that there's still no taper and to get a sense of how much it expanded from that. So that little turn was a couple of tenths of expansion and that feels pretty good. I think that'll be nicely controllable. This lap was very quick and easy to make, so let's see how it performs. I've got the lathe mostly prepped for surgery here. You don't want to get lapping compound on any part of a machine tool. It's like machine tool cancer, this stuff. So I do my best to keep it away from everything I care about. Now the lapping compound I'm using is this stuff. It's actually valve lapping compound. It's 400 grit, which is pretty aggressive as lapping compounds go. It's in the category of stock removal more than polishing. But I had it on hand and I think that's actually good for my case because again, I do have three thousandths of egg shape in that bore that I'd like to correct if I can. I slather a bunch of that on there and then tweak the set screws until it's a snug fit in there. And I'm gonna slide the frame over top here and then spin up the lathe and away we go. I'm trying to keep it moving laterally as much as I can. I don't have a lot of wiggle room there because the barrel is just barely long enough for this. You're supposed to be able to pull the part a third of the way off both ends of a barrel lap to keep it from bell mouthing the bore, but I just really didn't have that option here. Once I feel the lap loosening up, then I pull the part off, apply a little more pressure to each set screw, slide it back on and resume. The basic idea here is that the barrel is made of something softer than what you're lapping. So aluminum in this case, because I'm lapping cast iron and the lapping compound embeds into the softer material. So that aluminum barrel is basically turning into a grinding stone as we go along here. And you can see that happen. Now the trick here is to expand the lap a little bit between each pass, just enough that you can slide the part on. But of course, if you get it too tight, then you can't get the part back on. If it's too loose, then you won't make any progress. And also if you get it a little too tight, the lathe can grab it and rip it out of your hands. So you do gotta be careful about that. I found it was actually easiest to take advantage of the window in the casting here and snug them up thusly. This made it a lot easier to snug them up without getting them too tight. And then I always give the chuck a little bit of a spin by hand before I power it up to make sure that when the lathe starts up, it's not gonna rip this thing out of my hands. And be careful how you hold it because if you get a little bit of angle on there and the lap binds up in there, it might grab it anyway and rip it out of your hands. After about 20 minutes of going at it like that, I decided to take a look at my progress here. So I'm flushing everything down with WD-40, get all those surfaces nice and clean that grit really gets everywhere and makes quite a mess. So it's tricky to get it all clean so you can see what the surface actually looks like. WD-40 seems to do a pretty good job. You can see on the short side of the egg of my bore here, the finish is noticeably smoother. And then as the surface winds around to the wide side of the egg, you can see some of the tool marks still there from the line boring. So it's definitely working. And as expected, it's affecting the short side of the egg first. What surprised me though, is how far around to the wide side of the egg, the surface actually improved. It improved in more areas than I believe the lap should have yet been touching until we get all the egg out. So that was actually encouraging. This does seem to be uh, helping quite a bit more than I expected. So I decided to just keep going for a while longer and see if I could get that smooth surface all the way around. 
After some more of that, I decided I better check on my dimension again and just see how much that's changing, if at all. I really didn't have a sense of that, but this was quite surprising. The short side of the egg has actually come back into tolerance from being two thou undersized to being right on size. So I actually took two thousandths out of the short side of the egg there, and that's quite surprising. You can see how shiny the finish there is getting. You can see the reflection of my finger there. So I actually decided to stop here because I've taken almost all of the egg out of this bore now. And you can see that the shiny finish makes it almost all the way around to the wide side of the egg. There's a little bit of the tooling mark still left there. But I don't want to go any further because I'm really starting to modify the dimension now. This would be the point to switch to a much finer grit, maybe something like 2000 grit lapping compound or even get into the diamond pastes, like a 5 micron diamond paste to just really polish the existing surface without altering the dimension. But I don't have any of that on hand and you would have to make a new barrel lap to do that. You cannot reuse a barrel lap once you've put a certain grit of compound on it, that lap is ruined forever and must only ever be used for that compound because you can't get the grit out of the surface. It's there forever and will contaminate any other grit that you try to apply to that barrel. And I didn't want to go to all the trouble of making another one because honestly I'm really happy with this surface. But hey, this engine has another bore this exact same diameter. So I applied a little more compound to the barrel there and we can use it again. Now for the cylinder casting, there's no egg shape in this. This one is extremely round because it wasn't clamped in some sort of medieval torture device when I machined it. And honestly, the finish in here is quite good, but I thought I'd run this thing in there and just see what it looks like. And who knows, maybe we could make it a little better. Because this bore is nicely round, the lapping went much, much easier. It was a lot easier to get the diameter of the lap set right and it ran much smoother in there. It was much easier to feel your progress and know when to expand the lap and so on. With the badly egg-shaped bore like I had on the crosshead, it was definitely trickier. And this casting is also just a lot easier to hold. That big clumsy frame was pretty difficult to work with. Now, once again, the barrel doesn't have enough room for me to slide it off the end as you're supposed to, so I'm flipping it in for end a lot and sliding it off the one end that I do have access to to try and prevent adding any taper or bell mouth to this bore. Once again, after a thorough cleaning, a little bit of inspection here reveals that, yeah, once again, the surface in there is definitely improved. Much like the crosshead, the cylinder was perfectly serviceable the way it was, but that finish is definitely better. I'm trying to show the reflection of my finger there, but because of the curved surface, it's difficult to show it on camera. Hopefully you can tell that it's shiny. It's not a full mirror polish like you might have on a model airplane engine, but it is indeed shiny. Steam engines are very forgiving in this. They don't need nearly the perfect surface that a ringless internal combustion piston does. Once again, I checked the size here from that 10 minutes or so of lapping. And again, I was surprised to see that the diameter had actually increased by a full thousandth. So definitely time to stop here because I'm at the top end of the tolerance now on that bore. That's that 400 grit for you. It does actually remove stock reasonably quickly. So you want to be a little bit careful with that stuff. Overall though, this barrel lap worked super well. It definitely improved the finish in both bores and it corrected most of the egg shape in my crosshead bore. So I'm really excited about that. This worked out really well and I learned a little bit about the world of lapping just by sticking my toe in it here. Thank you very much. I want to thank Mark Presling for his excellent video on this topic. I wouldn't have known how to get started without him. And thank you to my patrons who make all of this possible. And I'll see you next time.